I'm trying to film a video here. You're drooling all over me. Okay, let's go. Everybody, how have you been doing? I hope summer has been treating you well so far. I know for some areas the smoke has been really bad, but we've been spared so far this year, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that our summer will be okay. Thanks for joining me today. Well, I hope you will have good weather and good air to breathe where you are. I feel I'm on a roll these days. Maybe because of my upgraded setup? You'll remember that I got a Sony ZV-10 a couple of weeks ago, mainly because the camera that I used uh, was overheating. And for my research, it showed that the Sony ZV-10 doesn't. And I was correct. It works like a charm. It also can be powered with a USB-C cable while I'm recording, which really helps with battery life. And it has a killer autofocus feature. Like, it doesn't lose a beat. It just works. Initially, I was less than impressed with the colors the Sony was producing. It was just too much green in it. But I made a few in-camera adjustments to the white balance for continuously recording in the studio. I'm using this white balance with added magenta and blue. And I've been really happy with the output now. I've been so happy, in fact, that I already started to add some accessories to this camera, of course. Like, you know me, I can't not accessorize my things. I'm a woman after all. Let's start out with sunglasses for my camera. Yeah, I know, I'm a fashion addict, what can I say? The main reason for me to wanting to film with a mirrorless camera instead of an iPhone or a smartphone has to do with background blur. I want it a blurry background, a bouquet in the background for a proper subject separation. So basically, I'm in focus and everything behind me is blurry. It's called bouquet and the blurrier, the creamier, the nicer it is, the happier I am. So out of focus bouquet background blur that you get from lenses with a low f-stop value such as my Sony 15mm f1.4. The lower the number on that lens, the wider the lens opens up and the more background blur, like the bokeh you're getting. But a wide open lens also means a lot of light streams in, which could result in overblown images or jerky footage when your camera is trying to adjust shutter speed in order to prevent too much light to come into the camera. Every image the camera takes requires the shutter to open so the image can be captured by the image sensor. When you're recording at a speed of 24 frames per second, that means that you have 24 images per second that the camera takes in short succession. When you're filming at 24 frames per second, your recommended rate is double that. So 24 times two, break out the calculator, is 48. I don't know if there's a camera out there that has a shutter speed of 48. So we go to the next possible number, which is 50. A shutter speed of 50 means that there's a lot more light hitting your sensor for every frame of your footage. And so it would overblow your footage if it's bright outside with your lens open all the way. So to combat that overblown footage, one option would be to increase your shutter speed to like a really high number. So the shutter only opens a very short time and less light hits the sensor, thus not overexposing your footage. But those quick shutter speed settings can really mess with the smoothness of your footage. And the shutter is only open for such a short time, it captures the, the movement of your subject almost like a stop motion image because there's no motion blur. In order to get motion blur, you need to keep the shutter open longer. Have you ever tried to capture a picture in low light? If you don't hold the camera rock steady, the pictures will be blurry. That's also the reason why 
a video looks more realistic. Okay, here's a sample of what it looks like when you're taking a video with a really fast shutter speed. And here is that same movement at a slower shutter speed. Okay, we determined we need a large aperture and we determined we also need a slower shutter speed. So a lot more light comes in the camera. And now you're taking this camera outside to film something like a car show and suddenly everything is overexposed, but by a mile. Let me show you an example of what it looks like when I take this camera with a lens of f1.4 and a shutter speed of 1 over 50 seconds outside to film a video. There's overexposed footage and then there's overexposed footage. I guess it's just way too much light. So how can we get properly exposed footage that doesn't look like stop motion images? We put sunglasses on your camera. They're not actually called sunglasses. They're called neutral density filters or ND filter, a filter. Why is it called neutral density? I haven't got a clue. I don't know. Most people use the abbreviation anyway, ND filter. So there are ND filters that you can use to take pictures of moving subjects that you want to have blurry, such as a waterfall. Keep your aperture open for a lot longer. And so the entire movement of the waterfall will be captured. That also works for ocean when you have waves washing around rocks. It looks like fog. When you have your shutter open for so long, obviously you need to reduce the light that comes in it. So that's where these ND filters come in. Now for videography, because you move around your camera all the time, we have variable ND filters. A variable ND filter can vary the strength of the density as you rotate it. And usually they have like um, markings on the side. So you know where you're going, you know what I mean? So you can adapt your filter similar to a circular polarizer. You can adapt your, your filter strength to the situation at hand. So you always have a proper exposure. So those filters come in various variations and costs and models. I ordered one from K and F Concepts because it was highly recommended. It had a huge number of variable F stops from like nine or 10 or something like that. And I noticed that at the higher end, like at the darker end, there was a, a really funny X in my images. It was just not working properly. Some was properly exposed, some was too dark. There was just a lot of vignetting. The other thing I didn't like that I had to screw that thing on all the time. Again, various light conditions happening. Sometimes you just change settings in your camera and you don't want the filter on anymore. And there was just a lot of screwing around going on, if you know what I mean. Need the filter, screw it on. Light changes, don't need the filter anymore, unscrew it. Good grief. Those are 30 seconds I'll never get back. The other problem that I had with that filter that, like this one here, you would rotate it and it would never stop. You rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and you never know where you're at. I mean, you're behind the camera, you're, you're rotating your filter, you're looking through and you wish you knew if you're rotating it in the right way or not. So there was a lot of rotating and screwing and just, I didn't like it. So I looked at other options and one of the options was a filter that was magnetic. So you would screw a adapter on your lens and then that filter would then sit magnetically on that adapter. So you can put it on, you take it off, put it on, take it off and leave the adapter on the lens. The one I found that I really liked is from Newer. Newer is a Chinese brand that makes photographic equipment at really good prices. And I didn't expect much of it. But I really like that thing. There's no X, mind you. It has a much lower range of F stops, like only five from 22 to 32. So it's not very strong, but there's no X. It attaches really securely to my lens. And the other thing I really like about it 
it doesn't rotate endlessly. It just goes stop and then it goes high stop. So you know exactly where the two ends are, the low end and the high end. Makes it really, really easy to use that filter. I didn't notice any color variations and I have put that adapter on my 15 millimeter and I haven't taken it off since. The lens cap works really well on it as well. So only if you take the filter off, you have to take the filter off because otherwise you can't, you can't put the lens cap on, but that's okay. So I got this little pouch here, you know, from Amazon. It's one of those, it's almost like a coin, coin pouch. It, I, I can't show you the filter right now on the camera because I'm using it, but this is, it goes in there and then it closes and I throw that in my bag. So this newer filter isn't very strong, which is probably what prevents the X from happening. So I went and got some footage at this auto show that I went to with my friends and my husband. The sun was really, really bright, not a cloud in the sky. And I wanted to take some nice footage with subject separations, like a classical b-roll shot and the nd filter just wasn't cutting it so at this point i had to put the camera in aperture priority so keep your aperture of f1.4 for that bokeh with the filter cranked up the highest let the camera decide where we're gonna go with the shutter speed so some of that footage may not be as cinematic as your one over 50 second shutter speed will get you but you know, you pick your battles. Do I want the creamy background or the smooth movement? So yeah, you pick your battle and, and I and I decided I'm gonna stick with this end of the filter. Not the darkest sunglasses in the world, but dark enough to become usable for my everyday needs. Okay, I'm going to put the link for this filter in the description below. I did buy a bunch of more accessories and I will talk about them in other videos. And you may wonder, why are you already buying so much stuff for this new camera? Because it really has grown on me. I will film more footage and I will post more videos about other accessories that I'm adding to my arsenal. Well, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful and you learned something from it even if it's only that I know very little and I'm still making videos about it. So thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you again in my next video. Bye!